Hi, this is David with David's Tutorials, and in today's video, I'm going to tell you about the power of the navigation pane in Microsoft Word. If all you ever create in Word is short documents, then you don't need this video. You can stop watching right now. However, if you're like me and you create longer documents, such as tracking lists of things you want to organize, keeping extensive notes on things you want to learn, perhaps creating and organizing institutional bylaws, or even writing a book, or creating any large or long document, then what I'm about to share with you can make your life a whole lot easier when you go back to that document and need to find something. As I've often said, it does you no good to keep something if you can't find it when you need it. This holds true for video gear or camera gear or sewing notions or hobby or craft materials or all the junk you've got stored out in your utility room or text and illustrations in a Word document. It's those long documents that we'll be looking at today. As an example, let's use this 50-page document I've been keeping on notes I have picked up in using the Blackmagic Design DaVinci Resolve Video Editor. This is a tremendously powerful video editor, but with all that power comes complexity, and with all the complexity comes a very steep learning curve. To help me climb that very steep learning curve, I started keeping notes on what I learned in a Microsoft Word document. And as of today, that document is more than 50 pages long, more than 13,000 words. So you can imagine if I wanted to find one specific thing in there, it wouldn't do to just go poking around, see if I could see it. I'm gonna show you three tools in Microsoft Word, and all three of these tools are hidden in the navigation pane of Word, which you can get to by pressing Control or Command F on your keyboard. If you've worked with Word much at all, you're probably already familiar with this keystroke sequence, which ever since the earliest versions of Word has meant find. You bring up the dialog, type in the text you want to find, and Word tells you where the matches are in your document. Let's say I want to refresh myself on the notes I took about color keying in Resolve. I'm not going to tell you what color keying is right now. That's probably a good topic for a different video. But right now, you can see I have already pressed Control F, and I am at the Find tab of the navigation pane. Note that just under the field where I type in the text I want to find, there's a three item horizontal menu and the word results has a bar under it. This means whatever you type in the search field will show up in the results below this label. Let's start typing keying now because keying is what I want to find. Note that if I type in the first three letters and pause, it gives me all of the so far matches. In this case, 54 of them. If I continue typing the entire word, adding ing, the results are refined down to just three results. Notice how the matches are highlighted in the document on the right part of the screen. Using the find function on the navigation pane is the first tool to find what you need in your document. The second tool is the pages tool in the navigation pane. If we click on that, we can see the thumbnail representations of the pages in our document. Notice we still have keying in the search field and it shows the page on which keying is present. If I delete that word keying, we now see all of the pages in the document. If you wanna see more pages at once, you can drag the navigation pane wider. Of course, this reduces the size of the text in the right side of the window. Let's go back down to this single page width in the navigation pane. Using the Pages Nav tool is very handy when you need to find something that shows up well on a thumbnail, such as a table or an image. Here, I'm scrolling down the list of pages until I see the image I want, which just happens to be on page 18. To see the whole page that has that image, I simply click on the thumbnail, and there's the page in full display on the right-hand side. The final tool I want to tell you about is the Headings tool. This is only useful if you have organized your document with the proper headings in the Styles panel on the ribbon. 
such as heading one, heading two, heading three, etc. I've added a table of contents here using the word table of contents, and you can see by the indention that there are several headings and subheadings in this document. Clicking on the headings tool in the navigation pane, we can see all of the level one headings. The faint white triangle to the left of each heading is clickable and will display all the subheadings under that heading. There's those subheadings. I can click it again to collapse that heading. Notice the green screen references here. If I click on that, it takes me to the page, but there's no triangle next to it, which means it has no subheadings. Adding titles on the edit page is there. That has a triangle. I click on that. You can see it has a subheading. Let's come down here to the color correction, and you can see there are a lot of sub and sub subheadings there. You can also right click in the headings area to expand all of the headings in the navigation pane, or you can right click it to collapse all the headings in the navigation pane. This will help you get around it much more quickly. It only takes working with these tools for a short time to get the feel of them under your belt and to practice up on it and to begin to recognize the power of these tools and know how you can use them in your own very large documents. I hope this video has helped you be much more efficient in working with your very own large Word documents. If so, then please click that share button and share this video with anybody you know that uses Microsoft Word. Don't forget to give us that great big old thumbs up to let me and the YouTube robots know that you thought this video was helpful, and that way YouTube will know to recommend this video to other people who are looking for this sort of thing. Leave us a comment down in the comment section below to let us know what you thought of it, and also to let us know what you might want to see in future videos of this type. And if you're already a subscriber, thank you so very much. I appreciate every single one of you. And if you're a subscriber why not go ahead right now and click that subscribe button and then the bell icon to be notified whenever we post another great tutorial right here on david's tutorials